Rob Gulen, CTO and co-founder of Sigma. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me at Snowflake. I'm really excited to see your demo today. It's all about Sigma and Python. Yes, we released a new native application where we brought Sigma and Python and Snowflake together as a native application running on Snowflake containers. I can't wait to see it working. Absolutely. Let's jump into the details of the architecture. So if you look at this diagram here, you'll notice we start in the upper right. We've got the browser using Sigma, and that's where the user is going to start. A lot of their work is just going to be traditional uh, working in that interface, which is going to generate SQL, run queries against Snowflake. And you'll see that that path is laid out there already. But what's new here is, is in the lower left. We're also showing that we are able to integrate Python in this environment. And what's really neat here is the Python's running within those Snowflake container services because it's been installed via the native app. So it runs directly in the customer warehouse. It leverages their security model. And we push all of that compute down to the customer warehouse. I like it. Pushing compute to the warehouse where the data is. I see that Sigma knows how to talk SQL, but now we're adding Python. And you are noting here uh, your SQL interactions, your notebook socket. Uh, when you're reading objects from a Snowflake, and when you're writing objects to Snowflake. Yeah, and that's one of the really interesting things about Sigma is it's not just a read-only interface. You can actually build things that are writing back and changing things and actually build out sort of true applications. Yeah, and you have a native app that's running in Snowpark container services. Absolutely, and so it's all within the environment that the customer has installed there, and they're the one that gets to, to configure that, and it, they know that it's part of that secured environment they already trust with Snowflake. Awesome. Can we see it in action? Absolutely. So let's jump in. We're in a Sigma workbook here. And you'll see that I have some product sales data from my company. And I've already done the work to take a bunch of these orders. I've grouped them by product name. And I've done some calculations here. I've written some formulas to figure out how many customers ordered each product, what the average order revenue was, the revenue in 2023. But if I want to sort of start getting some ideas about how to analyze these products, Working with 1,096 different products, it's a lot, to, it's a lot for me to, to hold in my head. And so this is a great time where I might say, I'm going to involve my data science team. You'll notice here that it has my name in the, in the workbook here. Our workbooks are actually multiplayer. You can bring different pe people into the same workbook. So let's imagine that- Multiplayer. Multiplayer. So let's imagine that I bring in my uh, data science team, and they may want to work in Python. Let's imagine that they're going to build out clustering and they're going to build out directly in the same interface. So they're going to create a Python element. And that user, since it's running in the warehouse, they're going to choose a connection here and say, this is the Snowflake instance that I want to use. It's where the Python will run. And let me just start with something very, very simple. Let's take some Python code here that is just going to use that first element in the workbook. And I'll run it. And anyone that knows Python is familiar with pandas. And so you'll notice here that we've converted to a pandas data frame, and we've printed it out. And what I want to show you here is just that Python is exactly accessed to that same data we see above in the workbook. Mm -hmm. So you have thousands of products, and you want to make sense of it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on top of the data that the business users started with. So we want to make that collaboration work really seamlessly. Let's do something a little more interesting than just printing out the data frame, though. Let's go ahead, and we're going to leverage an open source package, SkyKit, to do k-means clustering. So I've run that on my Snowpark environment here just by clicking Run and pasting the code in. And once I have that clustering that's been run, so can we see a little bit more of the code? This oh, is absolutely. sklearn, make a pipeline, standard so, scalar. So we started with the, the um, data frame in Pandas. We created four clusters from it. You'll see now we leverage this open source package to actually run the pipeline. And then we're going to fit that pipeline to the samples we have, and then we print out the labeled data at the end. So you see the output in real time. And that's it. And this was run inside the that Snowflake all warehouse. run via the native application inside the Snow, Snowpark container services. Just looking at this output in text is probably not quite what my business user wants. And so that business user is now going to pick up the work from the data science team, and they're going to visualize it. So all you have to do is click this and say, create a visualization from it. In this case, I'm going to create a scatter chart. And I'm going to look at that uh, distinct customers and plot the average revenue against it. But you remember that we did some uh, clustering here. And that clustering came out in that labels column. Now, we now have this nice uh, chart showing these product groups. But you'll notice in the corner here, 
that the product groups are labeled 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now, since I'm the subject matter expert here, the business user, I know little better names for these categories than just 0, 1, 2, and 3. This is a great example of where I can actually bring my own data and write it back to the Snowflake warehouse and integrate it in the workflow here. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy some data I have over here, which is my input on what we should name these things. Uh -huh. So you're looking at the four different groups. There are four different, very distinct clusters. And this is what you think each group should be called. Exactly. This is my idea of when I look at that data, I think that zero should be called core products, one economy products, et cetera. And what you'll notice here is when I pasted in that data, behind the scenes what actually happened is we called into Snowflake, we created a table, and we inserted that, these rows into that table. So all of this data always lives within your Snowflake environment. Again, we're really focused on keeping the data there, keeping the compute there, keeping the security and governance there. Like magic. So let's go back to that chart we were looking at here. We have a 0, 1, 2, and 3. Every Excel user will remember the, the formula VLOOKUP. We're going to do exactly that here. We're going to do a lookup where we replace those 0, 1, 2, and 3 from our little mapping table. And we're going to show the label, click Done. And we now have a new column, you'll notice, got replaced here. We will call it Clean Label. Uh -huh. So now we have something that I can actually, as a business user, consume. I can see the names all work out. However, I don't want to just stop there. You'll notice when I brought in my data, I also have my own ideas on how much these product groups are going to grow. And so this is a case where I'm trying to do a forecast, right? I'm trying to bring in my own ideas about what I think will happen. And it's another case where I probably want to then involve my data science team and say, OK, I have these ideas about where I wanted to forecast, but come into this workbook and work with me. Help me do some machine learning and build out a model to actually forecast where these things are going. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to add Python again into this element. And again, I'm going to say I want to run this directly in this warehouse. I'll move over here to my code. And I'm just going to grab a bunch of code here. And we'll walk through it in a second. So as I uh, bring that in, we'll run it. And let's go ahead and talk about this code. So you'll notice first that I start by actually leveraging two different data frames from this workbook. So you're not limited to just starting with a single one. I'm creating 10 years of projections. I'm listing those out. I'm merging back in the data frames, looping through the data, and transposing it for a nice output. And again, as a business user, I probably want to actually visualize this. So let's grab that work that the data science team did. Let's plot a, a bar chart where I look at year. I'm going to look at that revenue that's projected. And I'm going to, again, divide it by the, those product categories. So we can see here, I've taken the output of the, the work that my data science team has done. I've now divided it by the different labels from the different clustering. And I've been able to visualize it. Now, Amazing. Uh, until 2033. Until 2033. We can check back with Plugs Electronics and see how they're doing in 2033. But one last thing I want to show you. Mm -hmm. What's the most fundamental thing in a spreadsheet is to say, what if? What if I want to change my mind about one of the forecast numbers? So I'm a little more pessimistic on the outliers than uh, I was when I first created this data. So I'm going to say, actually, they're going to go down at negative 25%. Oh. And so as simple as typing that number, I'm actually changing data within the warehouse. Now I can rerun this Python block that my data science team built for me. And that's going to then cause my forecast to update. And that will then cause my chart to automatically recalculate here. And we're going to see that outliers are actually even worse than I had originally projected. And everything is connected together. Everything is connected together. You can see how small these outlier bars gotten here. And that's really the magic of what we've been trying to show throughout this demo. We had work that was done by a spreadsheet user. We had work that was we brought in the data science teams into the same multiplayer environment. We had work that could be done by a data science team, all together, all in one environment, all reacting to each other's work. That was awesome. Thank you so much for this demo. I love how you're bringing Python and more of the data scientist workflow into the whole company. Absolutely. It's been, uh, it's been great to have one interface where 
whether you're a data scientist, a business user, a SQL user, you all work together in one multiplayer environment. And I think if we can get everyone collaborating on data on one platform where it's all governed and secure in the same place, it is a huge victory for all both our customers and us. One platform, multiplayer, like multi-personas collaborating together, that's awesome. Uh, where should people go learn more? So the Python is available today as a native application on Snowflake's Marketplace. You can contact our team there or visit us at sigmacomputing.com. Sigmacomputing.com and the Snowflake Marketplace, and people should watch our full conversation. So to watch the full episode, check out the link below. Thanks for watching, and for more Snowflake developer content, go to developers.snowflake.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe.